good day, everyone. Today, let us discuss about fabric construction. So what is fabric construction? Fabric construction involves the conversion of yarns and sometimes fibers into a fabric having characteristic determined by the materials and methods employed. Textile materials are produced by six different construction methods. Each method can give us advantages and disadvantages. The six methods are namely felting, braiding, netting and lace, kneading, and lastly, weaving. Before exploring the methods one by one, let's have a fun fact. Did you know that woven fabric is what others may call it, are just fabrics that are woven on a loom by interlacing two yarns at right angles to each other? Yes, that's it! What's amazing about it is that we have a diagram specifically for a woven fabric that shows its parts. Please take a look at the picture shown. Weaving fabric is done by interlacing warp and weft thread. The warp threads are placed along the length of the fabric, while the weft threads are placed along the width of the fabric. The weft yarns are wrapped around the warp yarns to create an edge to the fabric, known as the selvage. While the diagonal or cross grain of a woven fabric is what we call bias. Again, selvage can be found in the edge of a woven fabric that doesn't fray. So now, going back to the methods, the first method is what we call felting. Felt is a dense, non-woven fabric and without any warp or weft. Instead, felted fabric is made from matted and compressed fibers or far with no apparent system of threads. Felting is the oldest method of fabric construction. It was known before weaving. Fibers and hair are compressed together by the application of heat, moisture, and pressure. Second method is the braiding. Three or more yarns are doubled back and interwoven, one yarn over another to form a fabric. An early example of braiding is the handmade braided rug. Today, complex braids are made and used as trim or fashioned into unusual garments. Next, we have netting and lace. Netting and lace developed into a fine art in Italy in 1300 and 1500 BC. There are many book and lace making, but we shall not attempt to discuss the methods by which lace is made, except to mention several of the most common types of machine-made laces sold today, and these are Lever method, Bobinet method, Nottingham method, Shifley method, and of course, there are still many types of handmade laces. After that, we have knitting. Knitting came into being into the 16th century. There are two methods of making knitted fabrics. We shall describe them briefly, as there are many good books written on the production of knitted fabrics. For our purpose, we shall classify them as follows. Weft knitting, or as a circular knit with loops running across the fabric. There are several basic stitches, plain, pearl, rib, interlock, and jacquard. Next is warp knitting. This is a type of knitting that can be done by hand or by machine. Warp knitted fabrics are more closely knitted, having four times as many stitches per inch as weft knitted fabrics. Knitted fabrics can be made flat or circular. When the shaping is done by dropping stitches, it can't be recognized by the fashion marks. If a knitted fabric is made by the circular method, the needles can be set tighter, making fabrics that are narrower. No fashion marks are visible. And lastly, the sixth method is the weaving. This is a fabric. If we will look closely, we will see that fabric is made out of two yarns. 
interlacing to each other at right angles. And this process is what we call weaving. The process of weaving is done by looms, and there are two types of looms. One is hand loom, which is worked by hand and power looms, which is powered by electricity. Power looms are generally used for large-scale production of fabrics. In hand looms, the entire process of weaving is done by hand loom laborers. And do you know what clothes are made of fabrics that have been weaved? Well, almost everything that you wear from shirt to shorts and dresses to jeans and under the process of weaving. So now, let's try to see. What are the basic weaves? The three basic weaves are plain, twill, and satin. All the others are derivatives of these basic weaves of their combination. Plain weave is the oldest, easiest, and most simple form of weaving. It repeats and most often used woven structure. It repeats on the minimum of two ends and two picks. Each filling yarn passes alternately over and under one warp yarn each warp. Yarn passes alternately over and under each filling yarn. The basket weave is a derivative of the plain weave. Most common baskets is the 2x2 two two basket. The repeat area are 4 ends by 4 picks. All ends weave in pairs as do the picks. This illustration shows a 2x2 two two weave which gives a distinct checkerboard effect. Other basket weaves are 3x3 three three and 4x4. Four four. Some are not for regular, for example, 3x2 or 3x1. Next is a twill weave. Here, one or more warp fibers alternately weave over and under two or more weft fibers in a regular repeated manner. This produces the visual effect of a straight or broken diagonal rib to the fabric. Twill has closer setting of yarns due to less interlacements imparting greater weight and good drape as compared to a plain weave. And the last type is satin weave. Satin weave is characterized by floating yarns used to produce a high luster on one side of a fabric. Warp yarns of low twist float are passed over four or more filling yarns. The low twist and the floating of the warp yarns, together with the fiber content, give a high degree of light reflection. So, to summarize all of it, fabric construction involves a conversion of yarns and sometimes fibers into a fabric having characteristics determined by the materials and methods employed, which have these six methods. So, that's it. I hope you enjoyed and learned our wonderful topic today. See you again next time for our next topic.